In this video, I'll show you how to start VS Code, press 4 and enter, and then set it up so that you can execute both R and Python code directly from VS Code. So VS Code is starting in a browser as usual. On the left here, we see a file browser. I've got a couple of files open, an R file and a Python file. I don't need the file browser, so I'll just click here to close the Explorer. Uh, and you can see, this is Python code, you can see that it, it already is syntax highlighted that is available in VS Code by default, and the same applies for the R code. Okay? However, to execute it, we need to install some extensions. And if I click here on the icon with the cubes, or the squares, and I check what ext extensions are installed, it'll show me that there's no extensions installed yet. And that's, that's by design. I, I deliberately cleared those out before I started this video. So let's close VS Code, and let's go back to the launch menu. And I can either start up JupyterHub or our Studio and use the terminal there. But here I'll just use the terminal directly from the launch menu, so 5 and Enter. And here I'm going to type the command setup. Okay? And so setup will look on GitHub for a number of extensions that I've pre-selected that you can use with the Docker container. As you can see, it's downloading them and it's going to install them in a second. And these include a couple of things like a project manager, uh, a tool for bracket colorization, uh, something for Git, uh, Python, and R stuff. All of those are going to be available now. Uh, it'll ask me, in this case, because I've run the setup command in the past, if I want to overwrite some existing files. I'll just say no here because I already have them. Okay. Now to get out of the terminal and back to the launch menu, I'll just type exit. And now here's the launch menu again. So now let's relaunch VS Code by again pressing 4 and enter. And when VS Code starts up, you'll see that a couple of things will happen. For one, it'll recognize that it's got some new extensions, so it'll open some tabs to tell you a little bit about those. Uh, go ahead and just close those, that's just fine. Uh, it says here something about that you can change the Python interpreter by using, uh, used by the Python extension by clicking on the Python version in the status bar, that's right here. So if I click here on the, the Python indicator, I can choose a different Python, there's really just one Python in the Docker container, so that's all fine. And then it says IntelliCode Python support requires you to use the Microsoft Python language server, so let's enable and reload the window. Okay, so now, got it. Now you'll see that under extension, uh, extensions, there is a number of extensions installed, uh, including one here for R, there's Python. So we have a couple of things available now. Uh, I don't need to look at the extensions again, so I'll just click on that button. And now I can go into my Python file and start doing some editing. Uh, you'll notice something, by the way, right off. So if I don't know if you can see it very well on your screen, but as I hovered here over this line, I can see to the right here that it says who was the author of this line. In this case, that was Vikram. Uh, and also, when I hover over things, it'll start showing me information about that. So in this case, it shows me that NumPy is a particular library, and it gives me information about the documentation. So these are features that are available through the, the Python extension that we just installed. Now, how do I run this code? So I can, first of all, I can right-click. So I'll go right-click on this line and then scroll down a bit. And then here it says, run selection line in the Python interactive window, which is exactly what we want. So I can either use the shift enter short, uh, shortcut, or I can just click on this and it'll activate a Jupyter kernel, Jupyter server, and execute the line of Python code that I just indicated. Now, how do I execute another line? I can again do right click, but it's actually easier just to press shift enter. And you can see that there is a another line that gets executed. Okay. Now just to give you a view, uh, it also has a variable inspector. So let's say I create a new variable x. I can go ahead and print that. And by the way, I'm using shift enter just to uh, execute this. You can see that that works. You'll see that when I hover over x, it gives me some extra information. And if I hover, it'll say, hey, that is an integer. So that's quite convenient as you're programming. You can just hover over a particular variable, and it'll tell you what type of a variable that is. So these are the basics. There's a number of other features in here. Uh, I wanted to show you here the variable inspector. And this is the little spreadsheet icon here on the, uh, on the right. 
and it'll show me in this case that I've defined a variable x of type integer with value 3. And so that'll work with data frames and a variety of other things as well. So this is worth exploring a little bit so you can see uh, how this works, but that gives you the basic idea of how to get started with Python in VS Code. So for our code, uh, we can also execute code directly from VS Code. Uh, we need to start something though. We need to start a terminal and start an R process there. So there's a couple of ways to do this. I can click here on this dropdown and I can select terminal and new terminal. Okay, so that's one way. Uh, in addition, I'm just going to exit out of this just to show you as a demo. If I press the control backtick command, that'll also open up uh, a terminal. Now here I'm going to start an R process and the uh, application I'm going to use for that is called Radian. Not Radiant, but Radian. So you'll see here this is an R uh, console. And so if I now go back to my R code and I press the key Control Enter, that will go ahead and execute that R code directly in this R terminal. One of the nice things about this is that you can scroll back and forth between it. You see that it has syntax highlighting and so on. Now this works quite well. It's not quite as slick as R Studio. But if you really like the VS Code Editor, it's a nice way to be able to use and execute our code as well. All right, I hope that gets you started with VS Code. There's a lot to learn. It's a great editor for you to get a little practice with. Good luck.